One of my guilty pleasures is a Netflix series called Lucifer. That's right, as in the devil. Uh, in this story, five or six seasons of them, a Lucifer gets bored in hell and he decides to go on vacation. Where does he go? Los Angeles. Now, running a wild nightclub is not enough for him. So he thinks, what else can I do? What am I good at? And he says, ah, punishing people. I'm good at that. So to make a long story short, he connects with an LAPD detective and helps her solve crimes. Of course, he doesn't really have detective skills, but what he has is this ability to look in a person's eyes and say, tell me, what do you desire? And the person is compelled to speak. There are, of course, a variety of responses. It's not all bad. It's not all revenge and greed. Sometimes the response is protect family, complete my life's work, and it comes out of the person in a way that seems to surprise them. Desire. Desires are often noble, working for justice, loving a person faithfully, serving God. But there are also lesser desires, and there are sinful desires. The spiritual task of Advent is to clear away lesser desires. Advent is about desire. Listen, pay attention to that, the words of the song we sung at the beginning. It's, there's a yearning for the Messiah. O come, O come, Emmanuel, ransom, captive Israel. There's a verse that tells us, O come, desire of nations. And we hear the same theme again at Christmas when we will sing the hopes and fears of all the years are met in you tonight. What deep yearning of the human heart. Like St. Augustine said, Lord, we are made for you and we yearn for you until we find you. Now, desires, good, bad. Sexual desire, political power, material wants are often abused. Something good can become lust or greed or abuse of power. But the deepest, the best desires of the heart point us towards God's greatest gifts. Sexual desire finds its fulfillment in self-giving and faithfulness opens the lovers to joy. And it's a love that spills over to the world around them. Material wants, food, shelter, clothing. At our best, of course, we work for these things to care for those we love. We work for these things to protect and give life. Desire. Holy desires are so much more than passing wants, more than that ski trip or the latest iPhone. Getting in touch with the deepest desires of the heart, we come to know who we are and what we are to do in life to serve God and one another. And these beautiful, deep desires also opens us up to how much God desires us to be with him. So throughout life, 
God wants us to notice and name and foster these holy desires. Desire. Two people feel sexual, emotional, spiritual desire for one another. In that way, discover a vocation to love. Desire. A student identifies a passion for a particular aspect of science or literature, philosophy, a work for justice, and so discovers a vocation as a writer, a biomedical researcher, a counselor, a community activist, a physician, a teacher. Desire helps us to find our way. First, seek to know the deepest and best desires of the heart. What gives you energy and what gives life to those around you? And secondly, this is most important because we need to discern and sift through all of this. Bring these desires into God's life. Pay attention to the scriptures we will hear during Advent. They will help us in this task. What do we hear? Well, there's the shock of prophecies about the end times. There's a strong call to wake up. In Advent, we're learning to wake up again and again to Christ's coming as told in the Christmas story. Be alert. Watch for Christ's coming, not only in the manger, but at the end of time. And now, open your eyes and hearts to the presence of Christ every day. The prophet Isaiah uses images of a renewed creation to proclaim a return from exile. Valleys must be raised up and mountains made low. Prepare the way of the Lord. Isaiah's creation theology gives us an image of human longing recreated. And as a creation theology, it invites us to reflect on the condition of our earth, which Pope Francis refers to as our common home. Because along with humankind, the earth has suffered the effects of our sins and neglect. It needs to be redeemed and recreated. And our response is required, of course. Stay awake. Stay awake to the needs of the earth to be healed and protected. Stay awake to the needs of the sick to be healed. And right now, to the needs of people suffering uh, side effects from COVID and from all the effects of the current pandemic, which has brought to light the disparities in health care economic injustice and racial inequalities. And then stay awake to your own need to be healed, forgiven, recreated. Advent. As we pay attention and as we ask God's help to sort out our desires, we will be more ready to receive the good news proclaimed at Christmas, the incarnation, the word become flesh. This mystery of faith is to open us up to the ways that Christ comes to us every day. Jesus is born to preach the good news, to suffer, rise, save, restore, heal, Jesus is our hope. Advent, 
waiting, joyful anticipation, desire. Incarnation. The mystery speaks of God's desire for us so deep that in Jesus he becomes one like us. What hopes does this stir up in you? And what desires of the heart does this mystery reveal in you?